Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people, surfers, humans everywhere. We love yous and thank you for joining the Stoke Bloke Show. Also joining me here, my cohort, Peter P.K. King. I'm here. He just got out of the water there. How's the water out there today, mate? Oh, it's beautiful. See-through. It's a very GoPro morning. I'll post the clip right now. Look at that clarity. Oh, that's beautiful. We love these days. Don't tell anyone, Barton, but I prefer one to two foot North Shore over 20 foot North Shore. Well, there's a lot of people that would, and it's so beautiful when the winds are light and the, yes, it is. the sand is sparkling under there, and it's one of those days today. We've had a lot of swell, but it's backed off now. Uh, the Sunset One Star QS was on the last couple of days. That was right. um, looked like a... Uh, difficult competition to surf in it was in a north swell sunset has waves off the point waves down the inside and it separates down the middle and people have to decide where they're going to sit and it's always a lottery as to where you sit and whether you get waves or you don't and uh, it's a tough competition they're at the round of 32 for the men semi-finals for the women but being a one star it's a great opportunity for locals to surf and you look through the drawer and it's all local people and they're getting the chance to surf their waves with their friends. So those smaller one-star QS type events, spam surf series yes. type of events. HIO. Yep. Smaller events are fun because, yeah, everyone gets a chance to surf their home spot with a jersey on, exactly. which we know they like. And we want to thank A New Earth Project for supporting mm. the podcast. We're coming to you from the Pipeline Studios, and as I've said a million times, Pipeline's just right out there. PK was swimming out there. <laughs> well, you should have pulled Lion out of school. He could have pulled into little barrels down the beach. Little Shh. backhand pig dogs would have been sick. Oh, have Who been invented amazing. the backhand pig dog? Was it Marvin Foster or Guy Omerod? Now, that is a fantastic call. Or a surfer from the Northern Beaches Long Reef in Sydney called Stuart Cadden. Oh, yeah, Stuart, Stuart Cadden. Stuart Cadden was one of the first people I ever saw. He's not old enough to be... He's, he's my a, age. Is he? Yeah, he's, he's my age. He was, uh, he was the best surfer in Australia when I was a kid. When we were 13, 14, Daff, as his nickname was, Stuart Cadden was the best surfer of our age division, without question. He was... At another level to all of us, he was incredible. And he was doing backhand pig dog tube rides before I started seeing them and hearing about them on a global level, you know. So I feel like he was one of the early ones. Uh, Glenn Winton, as you said. Mr X. Guy Omrod, one of the most beautiful styles ever in the history of surfing. Big influence on all of the Australian goofy footers, Guy Omrod. Most probably a name no one's ever heard of. Should probably do a goofy foot show. Talk about more goofies. Greenie. Greeny. Where was he from? Gaz Green was from Cronulla, but actually Caringbar, which was uh, inland, you know, like Mossman's inland from Manly, where I grew up. Greeny was inland from Cronulla. And I met Gary Green when we were kids, um, both on school holidays. My nan, my grandma lived on the, uh, at the entrance on the central coast. And I'd go up there every school holidays. They had great waves up there. And I'm surfing this little left point at Blue Bay one day, and there's this other goofy footer kid out there, Gary Green, who I meet, and we're like, 12, 13 years old, and we meet and we surf together, and we we were great mates for a long time. You know, I haven't, we still are. I haven't seen him for a long time, but he mm. was potentially the one of the best goofy footers I've ever seen. Gary Green, incredible style, incredible surfer. The tour was just a bit much for Greeny. He didn't enjoy it out there, all the travelling and all of the, you know, the, the competitions and all of that stuff, and and he sort of waned off the competitive surfing thing but when we were younger he was incredible and used to beat me consistently really yeah gaz Stuart cadden gary green uh they scott had your lindley. number scott lindley is another name who those guys had my number i used to look up to those guys mm. and dream of beating them and they were the the guys you know tom carroll was those couple of years ahead sure. of us and then Stuart cadden scott lindley gary green were the kids who i looked at who would i felt like were just ahead of me and i they're the ones i had to catch and they were the ones who pushed and drove me as a as a kid yeah you, did you kind of like notice other goofy foots like did you guys is there a like, I don't know, is there a secret cult of Goofy yes. Foots, like Duma? And what about those South Africans, Tommy Lawson, Mike Burness? There, they had a great little generation there too. I'll tell you, another one is a kid called Todd Ingham. Todd Ingham and Damien Hardman both rode for McCoy and were riding the laser zap single fins when we were kids. Really? And Todd Ingham was better than Duma. 
in my mind. Tottingham was better than me, better than Dorma. Tottingham was absolutely incredible. And he was those couple of years younger than Stuart Cadden, Gary Green, Scott Lindley and myself. And those couple of years younger were Damien and, and Todd Ingham. And Todd Ingham had every bit of ability that, that Dorma and I had. But it's interesting to see who goes on with it and mm. who doesn't. And, and a lot of the time, the people who are the best when they're 13 and 14 don't end up being the best when they're 25. Um, but it may be a little different now. And <laughs> what we call 13, 14 back then... now is five years old, is, as the blast off has shown us. And, and, and that's what I was going to say. The six-year-old, the discovery of week two of the BL Blast Off Global Video Challenge. I saw a couple that you posted. It's just unbelievable. Shh. Alessandro Dotti, he's uh, six years old. Italian parents, lives in Bali, and this kid surfing is like a 10-year-old, at least. Incredible, incredible surfing. Check this out. For six years old, I honestly believe he is the best six-year-old surfer. There's never been a six-year-old six year old who's ridden waves as good as he rides waves, ever, in the history of surfing. I believe that. Check this out. What else caught your mind this week on the blast off submissions? Well, there was a you know a lot of good stuff going on. Again, the videos kept pouring in. We've got you know 80, 90, nearly 100 videos already in the first couple of weeks, and we build up momentum into the last two weeks. We run till November 17th. First up for the week, we gave Iris Panalva, a five-year-old little girl from Spain, a prize pack from a, a friends at Octopus 7, which is a small little local brand there in Spain, but great people. They're sending Iris for her stoked-out GoPro point of views and the smile that she had on her face here on a holiday in Haleiwa surfing and it was amazing I got to meet her down there just on one of those days and she's so stoked but for a five-year-old young girl she's charging this young lady so we sent her a prize pack she was our first winner of the week Kai Peters who is the brother younger brother of Sebastian Peters from Florida we sent him a shark bands for getting us so stoked Lennox Lennox Lindsay from New Zealand was our keenest frothing Kiwi Grom great video from he and we sent him a future fins pack Alessandro Dotti who we just talked about he's getting a pack from Channel Island surfboards they're his favorite surfboard brand and those guys were stoked to hear that and sending him a prize pack. Zara Cavalio from here on the North Shore. And last week's show, we talked about Dominic Cavalio being the under 10s high performance winner of the week. Zara is his little seven year old sister. And she's following in her brother's footsteps. She's amazing as well. So we got a new sponsor on this week too, Speaker Sound. What? Speaker Sound Company. Speakwa. Speakwa, that's Speak how you would say it. That's exactly With the how. waterproof barnacle speakers and exactly, all that. Exactly, yeah. So they've come on board, sending her some gear. Thanks to Gavin Beshin for making that connection for us oh, with Speakwa. Cool. And they've got great products and uh, she's going to love that. She can put it on the nose of the board and listen to the tunes while she's surfing. Bluetooth. <laughs> And then our high performance videos of the week. We had four 12 year olds who just were surfing so, so good. And I wanted to give them a shout out. Yujiro Takai from Japan, Sawyer Glynn from Florida, Harry Gibbs from Australia, and again, Linux Lindsay, the Kiwi Grom. All four of those kids were right there in contention for the high performance video of week two. But it was Ace Flynn, a 14 year old kid from Margaret River, Western Australia, it was an amazing video. Video, incredible barrels up there at Nalu. What's going deep. on in West Oz? Why are there so many rippers up there? I think it's that raw, it's like Hawaii, isn't mm. it? It's, it's one of those places, and what we're seeing in the modern time is that the places with those crazy, challenging waves, Jack Robinson, Margaret River, yep. you know, the box, a big open ocean swells. Then in winter, those guys in, in southwestern Australia go up to northwestern Australia and you've got Nalu and the Bluff and they camp out up there and surf incredible waves. So there's amazing waves all the way along that coastline and they're the type of waves that prepare a young surfer for the main stage. Mm. You know what I mean? They challenge you in that way. And I suppose we see a lot of talent coming out of Indo for the same reasons, although it doesn't quite get as big and ha as gnarly consistently as Hawaii or Margaret, you know, southwestern Australia, um, it definitely has the perfect waves and the reef breaks and the kids that grow up in those environments have all the tools to go on to a world tour and at its meanest and its gnarliest, they're at their most comfortable. And that really is what we're seeing. I mean, in Australia, a lot of kids move to Casuarina and that snapper rocks, 
super bank area. That's like the focal point of surfing, competitive surfing, the surf industry, all of that stuff in Australia right now. Um, but they're kind of, those waves are a little bit soft, kind of, and they're not really, you know, they don't have the grunt that Margaret River has. So Is that um, where the Australia Surf Academy is? Or exactly. Whatever it's the High Performance Centre mm. of Surfing Australia is there, and that's people literally move the family from other parts of Australia and move up there so that their kids can, can train there and be in that environment that they see as the most high-performance environment in the country and the best place for their kids to grow up to to go on to, to careers in surfing, I suppose. So back to the high-performance videos of the okay. week. Ace Flynn for the boys, amazing videos. And then in the women's, Peruvian Brianna Bathelmus, Bathelmus, I believe is how you would say it, or butcher it, as an Australian may. Um, she had a 10-point ride in the national titles on one of those beautiful left points in Peru where she does like 16 turns. The wave goes for 30 seconds or more and she's just off the bottom, off the top, snapping, hitting the lip, carving, and it's an incredible ride. It was a no-brainer for our she high... goofy? Yeah, she's goofy. There you go. Yeah. Uh, it's no brainer for our high performance uh, women's video of, of week two. So congratulations to Ace and Brianna for their high performance videos, and then to all the kids who submitted. We uh, love you guys, and uh, good vibes all round. People are stoked. The kids are turning, you know, turning people's upside down smiles into happiness, and yeah. uh, that's that's the kind of goal of the event is just to to be stoked on surfing, help kids improve, but. You know, the only reason I feel like it's important to improve is because the better you are, the more fun you have. We had a clean-up submission, didn't we? We did. Thank you, mate. We got a clean-up submission from a brother and sister combo. From that was down so there. cute. Yeah, they're so cute. Down there in Byron Bay. Mm. Uh, the first video just showed their clean-up activity. Then they sent one with some messages about the importance of recognising and respecting country in the way you deal and treat with country. And then, and then you know, there's, there's this whole movement into to respecting and understanding and embracing Indigenous cultures and, and the wisdom that come from those cultures. And the kids' second video delved into that area and took us on a little journey through where they live and those concepts of respect and, and embracing, you know, the, the ancient wisdom. So thank you very much, Jay and Amelia Miller, for their clean-up video. Check this out. Great kids. The other thing was the GoPro angles. We've been getting some great GoPro angles, and I'm not sure if you've seen this young kid, Cruz Craft. He's only six years old himself, but he is a great joke teller. Really? And, <laughs> really. <laughs> and on his Instagram... He would have been great at uh, Blast Off Idol. Yeah, Blast Off Idol. He would have, mate. And he's great on Instagram. Kalia and Craft Cruz on Instagram, he tells these jokes. This little six-year-old kid, and he sits there and tells these jokes, and he is a great character. He's the one who people would have seen screaming and spitting the dummy, as we would call it, um, because he couldn't surf anymore. Do you remember that kid? Mm. He's walking along the beach with his board without, you know, I just want to surf some more. I just want another one. And he's losing his mind. It's one of the great, it went viral. It was one of those great ones on Instagram. And uh, he's in the blast off again this year and he sent in a great GoPro angle. So some great GoPro footage coming through as well. So it's all, it's all, um, it's all smiles and all stoke for week two of the blast off starting week three. And, um, you know, we, we reward the high performance all the way through to the the, the beginners and the stoke level and um, it's just a great environment for kids so get your videos in go to bartonlynch.com to submit the video and uh, we look forward to checking it out what about the big wave awards yeah in nazare in nazare so location. they went there yeah so you, had to, you had to fly there nathan our good buddy who you've been hyping all year is one of the most impressive surfers online his presentation his vlog and not to mention what he's actually doing in surfing creating his own path away from any contest support but he's created a really unique it, persona or oh, you know and now identity for himself yeah and now having won the surfer of the year and the ride of the year legitimately so and, and could have had what five different entries and what was the name do you even know the name of the organization that put that on they're calling it a new big wave awards thing or something like that? Yeah, I have no. no idea. There was no money. That's, that's... <laughs> there was just a trophy. Is that right? Yeah, but 
Nathan said himself to me, he said, hey, it's fine. This is the group of people that are caring about big wave surfing and we're establishing something. He goes, even if I don't win next year, we're, we're setting the groundwork for where we want to go and how we want to be recognized, uh, voting for each other and stuff. So yeah, well, they, that's... They, they liked, uh, it's, it's all of them. It's not outsiders doing it. You know, it's, it's them doing it. And that's the, that's the type of attitude yeah. you've got to have when you're growing or building something. Isn't yeah, his it? prize is his sponsors. Absolutely, and the reward yeah. that he gets personally mm -hmm. out of achieving such an accolade, you know, yeah. ride of the year in 2023. Okay, we're watching this ride right now. <sighs> you saw the wave? That crazy right hand. Well, there's, yeah. there's two. There's the right that's that deep back and, left, door, yeah. and then that yeah. left at Mulligmore mm. in Ireland where he's on that phone ball, the board's sliding around on that phone ball. He's so in control. He's got a GoPro in his mouth. Kitty's GoPros for breakfast. It's unbelievable. With coffee. So Nathan Florence, we've been talking you up here for a long time, haven't we? And we've so been so full of respect um, for the family and we, we all know how great John is and to watch his little brother come through and in his own lane, as you said, you know, creating his own career, his own path, his own way and, and winning those two major awards, Rider of the Year and Surfer of the Year is amazing. Congratulations. In the women, Justine DuPont... And so rightly so, she won the surfer of the year, the ride of the year, and the biggest wave of the year. So wow. she, she won all, you know, nearly clean sweep the women's division. So she is amazing, mate. Massive, massive waves that she has ridden. Beautiful style. The thing I love the most about Justine or that, that, that adds to her overall image and respect is that she could ride, she could surf the QS, she can surf sups, longboards, ride the biggest waves in the world, tow. She is an all-round water person. And one of the most lovely things that's happened to me in a very long time was that there were some big wave awards in California a few months back, right? She reached out to me and said, look, um, you know, we've got the, 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 these, these big who, wave Justine awards. Did? Justine And she said they asked me who I would like to present the award to Maybe. me. And I would love it if you could come to California and present it for me. That's a long way to go to present well, her. An award. And with a with a, a, a bad back and you know, yeah, herniated yeah. disc, I couldn't go. But I was so honoured mm. that out of all the people in the world, That's that cool. she could have chose to award her for this amazing year that she's had, she asked me to. And I was so touched, mate. I was like, well, oh, that's unbelievable. So, Justine DuPont, we're right behind yep. you too. We think you are incredible. One of the best women surfers of all time in all conditions without question. The biggest paddle came from Punta de Lobos in Chile and it was Chacha Ibarra. And this is a monster, mate. That wave is an absolute monster. To paddle into a wave that size, have to straighten off and wear the wipe out. Women's biggest paddle, Laura Enova from Himalayas, or a breakdown that way. I, I, was I, that during the eddy swell? That was during the eddy swell. Wow. Um, I saw that particular wave live. That was live. a huge day. That was a, a huge day and a great wave. And Laura Enova is one of those most amazing surprise packages because as her tour career... It never really, you know, she won Pro Juniors as a, you know, a young she girl. She won QS events when they meant something, when they were six stars mm. and stuff like that. I don't and think and she ever won like, a CT. No, and it looked like the pro career was the obvious choice. And after a few years on that pro tour and not really having success, you could tell she wasn't happy. She wasn't enjoying it. And then she's, and, and she's a skinny little small framed lady. And to transition to the biggest waves in the world, ship sterns, the stuff we've been watching her do since that transition to the big wave um, arena is beyond comprehension. And she is an incredible young lady and we all hold her in very high respect. Yeah. So congratulations on the biggest paddle. The men's biggest wave was Nick Van Rop. Oh, that's cool. And he Nikki. was a big tow wave at Nazare, of mm. course. And he is an incredible all-round surfer as well. Yeah. And then Danny Griffiths. Got the uh, worst wipeout for a ship Stearns one where he just gets mangled. It's horrible. And then the Young Gun award. So that would, you would have called that award having your ass handed to you. Having your ass handed to you. He got his ass handed to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just so ugly. We're oh. looking forward to that uh, upcoming feature segment in the yes. Stokebook podcast. I've had a bunch of... <laughs> I've had my ass handed to me a lot of times in this life. Not like that, though. No, not like... Well, not like... Not, no, not of that magnitude. Yeah. Nowhere near that. But in different forms and ways. Yeah. And we thought that'd be interesting to visit some of those times.
times where you've had your ass handed to you and, and the lessons you learn out of those experiences. And the final award I wanted to mention from the Big Wave Awards was the Young Gun Blast Off alumni, Ned Hart from oh, Western yeah. Australia. That kid, you know, we first saw him, call it four years ago or so, and, and we were like, Ned's a great young surfer. He came to the Bali blast off, and um, he's been on my radar for a long time, but I didn't know how good he was or how big his heart is and how big and courageous, he, how big he's willing to push himself and how courageous he is. So congratulations, Ned, for that amazing award, the Young Gun. Some incredible rides this year, and he's going to be a, a, you know, a future star of the Big Wave Tour. Florence Marine X bloke. He is too. He's, Did you know he that? rides for our friends at Florence. That's yeah, right. That's pretty cool. And he's a great young kid, mate. Really lovely kid. So he's a BL blast off alumni, alumni aren't yeah. they? I mean, you start here, kids, and you work your way up to these to these levels. Incredible of accolades. Members. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing. This is the start. Yeah. I don't really know if there's anything else for six year olds up to you know the I mean, age group that you're doing. There's not much in the world no. celebrating these. And there's local things, isn't there? Like the Menahunis event yeah. is a local, oh, regionalised, yeah. you know, Hawaii. And, and there's, so there's those young kid events, but we're the, the only global community of those frothing grommets and their families that come together. And uh, it's a good time. Congratulations to all the winners at the Big Wave Awards. That's an incredible yeah. feat. And we, we, I just trip every day on where surfing is going. And when you were a kid, if they showed you a photo of now... Mm. Even if it was Laird's wave at Chopu back then or whatever it was, you know, and that was a decade or more ago and it's come so far since then. Matahi Drolet's crazy one on that big day. If you were to see those back then, you would have thought it was AI. You would have thought it was not real and it was made Not up. Andy Irons, artificial intelligence. Artificial, exactly. Respect <laughs> AI. He's a legend too. That's funny that it's AI, you know, what, yeah, what yeah. we're talking about, artificial next, intelligence. Yeah, it doesn't realm. seem believable, some of the things people are pulling off, the airs and the big what, waves. What they go through, what they put themselves through, how hard and committed they are to this lifestyle of riding the biggest, gnarliest waves in the world. We take our hats off to you. Mm. Pan Am Games. So I, don't even, I don't even know what the Pan Am Games are. Yeah, so Pan American Games are an Olympic-style event that is for Pan American countries. I don't know what that is, but I suppose any American... Uh, continent-based countries. We know Canada was there all the way down through Is South America. Is there some America. Olympic qualification thing yeah. involved? What, so, for a surfer or for those other sports? No, well, I'm not sure about the other sports. Because there was sup race, there was sup surf, mm -hmm. there was different All the different categories. longboard. Oh, straight longboard, yeah. Straight longboard. Was there shortboard? Sup, shortboards. Luca Messinas won the men's gold. And Tati West. Tatiana Western Webb Goofy won the women's butt. gold. The reason, second place in the women's, which is what really what we want to talk about, was Sonoa Dempley Olin from Canada. Mm. And because Tachi is already in the Olympics as a Brazilian qualifier for the Olympics, Canada got their very first olympic surfer qualifying wow. for the olympic games at chopu so sonoa is a goofy footer you don't say eh eh sonoa does she is she from canada yeah she's from canada does she speak canadianish yes have you heard the weird her, accents and her, things they her say her and her sister matea are two of the best local products mm. matea's her older sister um they both rip i've done coaching with those guys before. what side of canada West. Yes. Okay. You've got to be there, haven't you? They're not like from the East Coast ding, 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 with ding, ding, uh, ding, ding, Celine ding, ding, Dion, ding, ding. where they have two eggs side by each and a pair of toast. <laughs> a, pair s a pair of toast. They say some <laughs> weird things. You haven't heard them Never say outside and stuff like that? Outside, no. Yeah, they're outside. What's that, the other oh, side? Oh, come on, eh? You haven't heard <laughs> I know Canadian the, accents? I, know the a, I don't think they do that in the West. Yeah, well, congratulations to Canadian surfing, Dom Domic, who runs that thing. They've got their first Olympian. Wow, very cool. Sonoa, congratulations, mate. Good on you. And, and she'll do well at Chopu. I know she was there for a or a, a warm-up camp, and that's she'll what go. I, say, I say. She'll go. And I say I've been sending people there to Chopu on camps to prepare the athletes for the event, and which is important. And let's hope they don't build that god-awful platform, right? Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. You're connected to ISA. Can yeah. you call Fernando and tell them to back off on building the well, aluminum? Well, I already did that. Okay. And I reached out to Fernando and I said, mate, what's the story with the thing? And he said, well, that's not us. That's the Olympic Federation. We've got nothing to do with that. Um, but, they, you know, it seems like the locals, it sounds like a bad thing. doesn't sound like a good idea. And anything permanent 
on a ah. reef like concrete pillars or whatever that it sits in yeah. doesn't sound like a good idea and and we know i know the people that built the old wooden one the, yep. not that it's old but that wonderful wooden structure and and if that's what the local people want and that's what everyone thinks is in the best interest of the environment longer term which it sounds like it is that's something that they're going to have to listen to and, and it'll be interesting to see where that conversation gets to mm. over time peoples we're done here for the stoke bloke show blast off video challenge week two wrap up pan am games sunset qs big wave awards thank you everyone stoked to uh have you join us? We've we've loved the support. We've been getting great comments from people, and they love you, mate. <laughs> they love the combo of the old fellow and you, and uh, we love you guys. Thanks for joining.